It's CKM Saturday. I'm Miss Retha and welcome back. And just for the record, that COVID stuff didn't keep me down very long at all. I'm perfectly fine now. I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving and a safe one like I did. I had a wonderful time. The only thing is I ate way too much, but you know what? It was delicious and worth every bite. How about you? Well, I want to take this opportunity to wish a someone very, very special a very happy birthday. Friday was Brother Philip's birthday. Would you help me wish him a happy birthday? Here we go. Happy birthday, Brother Philip. We hope you had a wonderful and blessed birthday. Thanks for helping me do that, guys. Today, we have one of my very, very favorite lessons. Jesus returned to heaven. Let's get started. Do you have any... My cats are running crazy here. Do you have any chores that you have to do at home? Jobs. Remember, we talked about that a few weeks ago, helping mom out at home or whatever, like taking out the garbage, folding clothes, washing dishes, whatever. Well, you know, some jobs are really easy to do and you don't have to have any special instructions. But other jobs are tougher and you need very specific instructions. Like at my house, there's only one way to fold bath towels and that's my way. You have to do it my way. I don't know why, but I'm extremely picky about folding bath towels. Well, I decided to have a little experiment and I used two of my very favorite people in the whole world. The first one was Townsend, my grandson, and the other one was Jaden, my almost grandson. Actually, he's my great nephew but I claim him as an almost grandson. I gave them a request. I asked them to help me make a sandwich. And we had some really funny results. I'm gonna cut away now, and the next time you see me, I'll be in the kitchen and we're gonna make those sandwiches. Be back in just a second. Okay, hi everybody, we're in my kitchen now and it's time for our sandwich experiment. The first sandwich I'm gonna make is Townsend's and I have his written instructions here. The first thing he says to do is take a slice of bread, put it on a plate, get ham and put on top of the bread. I don't have ham, I have turkey. He doesn't say how much ham, so I'm just gonna put one piece on there. Next, he says to get the cheese and put it on the bread. Here's the piece of cheese. Now it's wrapped. He didn't tell me to unwrap it, so I'm not going to. Put that on there. Next step is take the other bread and take mayo and spread it around. Right, here's the mayo. He doesn't tell me how much mayo, so I'm just going to dip some mayo, and I'm going to spread it around like he said. I think that's enough mayonnaise, don't y'all? Okay, next step is put that on top of the cheese. So there is Townsend's sandwich, per his instructions. I'm going to set that over there. Now it's time to make Jaden's sandwich. And Jaden gave very simple instructions. You take mayo. There again, he doesn't tell me how much. So I'm putting mayo. He didn't say use a plate, but I'm not going to put this on my counter. I think that's enough mayonnaise. Take mayo and cheese. Again, he didn't tell me to unwrap it. 
Now he was very specific about how many pieces of ham. Like I said, I have turkey. He said four things of ham. So that's one, two, three, four. So that's four things. Next step is two pieces of bread, one, two, and cut it in half. Okay, we now have that cut in half. So here is Townsend's sandwich. Here is Jaden's sandwich. I went by their directions. Out of the two, maybe Townsend gave the best instructions. That's iffy. But I followed their directions. So you can see what instructions can do, right? Most of us have made a sandwich before and I probably would never eat a sandwich again if this is the first sandwich I ever made. You don't know what you're doing if it's the first time you're making one, right? So I followed their directions and this is what I came up with. So directions are really, really important, aren't they? If you're doing something for the first time especially. Well, today in our story, Jesus gives his disciples a really tough job, but he gives them awfully specific instructions. And we're gonna see how important those instructions were. See you in a minute. After Jesus died on the cross and was raised from the dead, he spent time with his disciples over 40 days. During that time, Jesus told them even more about God's kingdom. Then, Jesus told his disciples to go to a mountain in Galilee. They saw Jesus there and they worshiped him. Jesus gave his disciples important instructions. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Jesus gave the disciples and everyone who follows him a job to do. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel, make disciples of people from every nation. Jesus also said, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. Then Jesus said, remember this, I am always with you until the very end of the age. Jesus told his disciples to wait in the city of Jerusalem until God kept his promise to give them the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After Jesus said these things, he went up into heaven. The disciples watched Jesus until a cloud hid him from their sight. All of a sudden, two angels appeared. They were wearing white clothes. These angels asked, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come again. He will return in the same way that you have seen him going into heaven. Jesus left earth and returned to heaven, but he did not leave us alone. Jesus promised to send the Holy Spirit to be with us and help us do God's work, to teach people everywhere about Jesus so they will trust in him as their Lord and Savior. One day, Jesus will return to make all things new and to rule as Lord over all.
When I was younger, I didn't really understand this story. I thought it was sad. It was like coming to the end of a really good book. It had a happy ending. That was the end. No more. It was all over. Jesus had come and done all he was supposed to do, and then he went home to heaven. There was our happy ending, right? But that's not the end of Jesus' story, is it? Jesus gave the disciples the Great Commission. And what was the Great Commission? To go and tell everyone everywhere about Jesus. Then baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, you know any follower of Jesus is a disciple. Disciples who love Jesus want to obey him, right? Think what the world would be like if the disciples didn't share the gospel like Jesus instructed them to do. Well, you and I wouldn't be here worshiping him. It took a disciple telling someone else, who told someone else, who told another someone all the way down to me so I can tell you, and then you can go on and on and tell someone and pass it on and pass it on, on and on, even until when Jesus comes back to earth. So it is so important that we don't let the good news end with us. It's our job to pass it on. And that's what we need to do, guys. Now that I understand this story, I am so excited I get to be part of the story of Jesus. I'm a disciple and Jesus gave me the Great Commission too. He instructed you and me to tell others about him. We get to spread the good news just like the original disciples did. Jesus left earth and returned to heaven, but he didn't leave us alone. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be with us and help us do God's work. We're going to hear that story next week. It's our job to teach people everywhere about Jesus so they can trust in him and he can be their Lord and Savior like he is ours. Let's see what Pastor Brian has to say about Jesus back to heaven instead of staying here on earth. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Catherine from Blair, Nebraska asks, Why did Jesus go back to heaven? Why didn't he stay on earth? Catherine, that is a great question. And you know, I, I think I've kind of wondered the same thing at times. What would it be like had Jesus stayed here and we could see him, interact with him in person? That'd be a lot of fun. It would be helpful for us, wouldn't it? But Jesus gave us the answer to this question, actually. He said that he was gonna go away because in doing so, he was gonna give us something better, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's fully God, and here's the beautiful thing, the Holy Spirit indwells each of us. So he is with us wherever we go. Think about Jesus on earth. He was only in one place at a time. And so if Jesus were still here today, he would only be in one place and we'd have to travel to see him, and, and that just wouldn't be that convenient and helpful, would it? But instead, we all have God within us as the Holy Spirit has taken residence in us when we trust in Jesus, and he's there to help us, to guide us, uh, to convict us of sin when we sin, to bring us to repentance, uh, to encourage us. The Holy Spirit's ministry is beautiful in our lives. And so Jesus was right, of course. It was good for him to leave because the Holy Spirit now indwells us and does great work in us and through us so that we can make much of God wherever we are. You know, one day we will see Jesus when he returns and we will be with him again in that regard and we long for that day but until then, he has really left us in a good position with the Holy Spirit, hasn't he? So here's a question back for you. What are some ways that we can live on mission while we wait for Jesus' return? I think I like what Pastor Brian had to say about Jesus couldn't be everywhere for everybody as a human, but the Holy Spirit could. I like that. Makes sense. 
We're going to learn a lot more about that Holy Spirit next week. So what about the question he asked? How can we stay on mission until Jesus returns? How can we do the job that Jesus gave us until he comes back to earth? Think about it. Well, we can always pray and ask Jesus to help us because he will if we ask him. Another great way is to share our Bible story with somebody this week. You know, God's word is meant to be shared. The good news about Jesus is just too good for us to keep it to ourselves. It's meant to be shared, and telling the Bible story to somebody would be a great way to do that. Talk with us about mom and dad and see if they have some suggestions too. Okay, now it's time for our key passage. This comes from John chapter 11, verse 25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. The Bible reminds us that we don't know the day or the time when Jesus is returning to earth. It could be next year, next month, or it could even be tomorrow. That's why it's so important to share the truth of this key passage with as many people as we can so they can learn to trust Jesus before he comes back. Let's talk a little bit more about our story. It's time to get your Bibles out, guys. I want you to turn to Acts chapter 1. That's Acts chapter 1. Where did Jesus tell the disciples to wait? That answer is in verse 4. Jerusalem. What did he say they would receive? That answer is in verse 8. They would receive power from the Holy Spirit. That's right. Next question. How will Jesus return? That answers in verse 11. The same way he left, through the clouds. He's going to come down through the clouds. How do you feel knowing that Jesus is going to come back? Well, I think we should feel happy. I know I do. Don't you? Just think. When he comes back, this world is going to be perfect. No sin. No pain. Just happiness and joy. I cannot imagine how wonderful that's going to be. You know, I'm so, so thankful that God sent someone to share the gospel plan with me. I was in Sunday school. I was seven years old, and her name was Miss Britton. And she talked to me about Jesus that day. She introduced him to me, and that was the first time I ever really, really thought about Jesus. I didn't become a believer that day. But he opened my heart and my mind to where I would listen and I would learn about him. I'll never forget Miss Britton. She was a, a wonderful teacher. You know, he loved me so much that he wanted me to know him personally. And the same is true for you too. 
And he has someone that he wants you to share the gospel plan with. Let's praise him right now by sharing the gospel plan with someone. You don't ever know. There might be somebody out there that really needs to hear it today. Let's go find our crowns, guys. God rules. He created everything. He's the boss. But we sinned. We all do it and we can't help it. It all started with Adam and Eve. God provided us with a Messiah, a Savior. Jesus gives his life for us. He dies for our sins, not his. He didn't have any. And we respond by praising him and loving him and spreading the good news to everybody. That was great, guys. Thanks. I love doing that with y'all. Okay, will you bow your heads while I say a prayer? God, thank you that Jesus didn't leave us alone. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to help us obey you, Jesus. Give us wisdom and courage to carry out your great commission. In your name we pray. Amen. You know, one day Jesus is going to return and he's going to make all things new and he's going to rule over the whole world. And while we wait on him to do that, to come back and do that, it's our job to share the good news with other people. God has given us a mission to do, and he gives us the power to do that through the Holy Spirit. I want you to remember that, guys. Next week, our lesson is going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. I want to thank Townsend and Jaden for helping me with my sandwich project this week. It was fun. Now let's say the Lord's Prayer. Bow your heads and close your eyes and fold your hands. Say it with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Love you guys. See you next week.